On December 28, 2014, in the very early hours of the morning, Air Asia Flight QZ8501 was lost over the Java Sea in its flight from Indonesian city Surabaya to Singapore. It was reported that the pilots had requested a change in the altitude to avoid bad weather they were experiencing. The request was denied at the time due to traffic. Air traffic control lost all contact with the aircraft at 7.24 a.m. Currently, the aircraft wreckage is being recovered and the black boxes have been found and the analysis of what exactly went wrong has begun. Disturbingly though, another airliner experienced a similar fate earlier in the year and has yet to be found. Earlier in that same year, Malaysian flight MH370 disappeared over the Indian Ocean. Sadly, no trace of the plane has been discovered and the mystery may never be solved. This incident immediately brought to my mind Air France Flight 447, which crashed in the Atlantic in 2009. That plane also apparently vanished in the night. When the wreckage was finally recovered two years later, and the investigation proceeded with the analyses of the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder, the revelations of what actually caused the accident were profoundly disturbing. Similar to the Air Asia Flight QZ8501, which was an Airbus A320, Air France Flight 447 was the larger A330, widely considered the most technologically advanced commercial aircraft ever designed. In fact, one of the pilots commented on just that fact as they approached turbulence, stating, thank goodness we're in an A330. Like almost every airline disaster, it wasn't a single unfortunate circumstance which brought down the aircraft, but rather a confluence of events that aligned to cause the disaster. However, in this particular case, the primary cause of the accident may portend not only potential problems in the airline industry going forward, but also perhaps troubling issues concerning the future of a society that is not evolving as fast as its technology. To briefly summarize the events of the disaster, Flight 447 was traveling over the Atlantic Ocean bound for Paris, France from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, when it encountered weather and turbulence. At the controls was First Officer Pierre Cedric Bonnet, the pilot with the least amount of flying hours of the three-man crew. In the left seat, taking on the role of pilot not flying, was First Officer David Robert, with twice the flying hours of Bonnet and significantly more flying hours on the A330. The captain, Marc Dubois, was on an official break in the cabin to the rear of the flight deck. Typically, commercial jets, such as the A330, only have two small windows of time where the pilot is actually flying the plane, at takeoff and upon approach and landing, which amounts to about four total minutes of actual flying. For the remainder of the flight, the autopilot flies the plane, and this was the case as Flight 447 approached turbulent conditions at high altitude. As ice crystals began hitting the plane, the pitot tubes, which provide information for airspeed, froze up. With the information for airspeed unavailable, the autopilot kicked out, and Bonaire took full control of the plane, taking the joystick controller in hand. For reasons that remain unclear, Bonaire pulled back on the stick, causing the nose of the plane to push up and the plane to climb perhaps in an effort to fly above the trouble. As the plane climbed, it began to lose airspeed. As indications became online, stall warnings began to sound. Indeed, Bonaire's actions had put the plane into a nose-up high-altitude aerodynamic stall, and at a certain point, it began to literally fall out of the sky. The pilots did not trust their indications, and when the captain returned, all three were unable to determine the situation they were in. There was an intense sense of terror and confusion on the flight deck. They knew they were losing altitude. They could have recovered by simply pushing the nose of the plane down and regaining airspeed. Unfortunately, they did not realize they were stalled until they were too close to the ocean for such a maneuver. Perhaps one of the most brilliantly engineered machines in human history crashed into the ocean with no mechanical or technical failure other than the temporarily disabled pitot tubes. Technology is advancing rapidly, and perhaps this airline disaster reveals the potential vulnerability 
of our growing dependency on technology. In essence, unplugged from the machines, we become helpless amidst a world of complexity that we have constructed. Certainly science fiction has explored the practical problems that may occur as our world becomes more and more technologically advanced. Eventually, our social structure will be entirely dependent on artificial intelligence systems. Provided we don't experience a total collapse prior to reaching these greater advanced states, these systems will be managing the complexities of supporting a planet of 10 billion people. And the nukes will likely still be around. But systems fail. And when the system failed at 35,000 feet, all control was lost. There's an interesting article that details Flight 447 in full from last year. I will leave a link at the bottom for you to read. This article also touches on these issues that I've brought forth. Thank you for listening.